بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو آر سیریز ریگارڈنگ انفارمیشن اینڈ کرپشن اینڈ ٹوڈے وی گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ سیلف رپورٹنگ سٹیزن رپورٹنگ اینڈ میڈیا رپورٹنگ ناؤ دیز آر آل ڈفرنٹ فارمز آف رپورٹنگ اینڈ آل آف دم ہیو دی ریسپانسبلٹی ٹو رپورٹ اینی رانگ ڈوئنگ بی اٹ ان دا سوسائٹی کمیونٹی ان انسٹیٹیوشنز اور اینی ویئر اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ اٹس ایکسٹریملی امپورٹنٹ دیٹ اف یو نو اباؤٹ اے کرائم دین یو مسٹ شیئر اٹ ود دا authorities because what happens is is that if you do not share it then you basically become an accomplice and you can also be pun punished for not informing something uh, which was detrimental to society and has uh, a ripple effect across society and adversely affects uh, the livelihood of uh, millions and millions of people uh, in any country that exists and especially more in the context of Pakistan. Now uh, when we are talking about self-reporting some states uh, have uh, laws and incentives that encourage individuals to report on corruption even In our national accountability uh, ordinance, uh, we see that uh, there is an article in which it is written that it is mandatory for anyone, if they know that a crime is taking place, then they have to support that particular crime and blow the whistle, and they can also be protected for that. So that is something which is now uh, gaining a lot of impetus around the world. Uh, punishment for corruption can be severe, and therefore penalty mitigation is a common incentive to encourage self-reporting. So it's always better that uh, rather than waiting for someone, Uh, if you have done something wrong, it's better to report uh, yourself because that would uh, enable you to get a lot of goodwill and uh, maybe a much lower sentence for whatever wrong uh, that has been committed. Now, Article 37 of the UNCAC requires state uh, encourages corruption offenders to self-report. So again, uh, what we see is that the state should be encouraging corruption offenders to self-report rather than someone going over to find what else they're doing. So they can tend to catalyze technology in a better way. They can take their own picture also. and therefore that can be sent. Article 39 encourages the private sector to report on corruption and to cooperate with the authority. So this is also very critical that if the public sector only wants money, but there's no one to give money, then naturally uh, there would be so many uh, different uh, complexities. So what has been said is that Article 39 basically uh, wants people to support corruption and to cooperate with authorities to whistleblowing, and they can also be then uh, rearranged and come under the witness protection program, which also is uh, a part in Pakistan. The challenge is the balance between the investigative benefits and the prosecution of persons. The United Nations Foreign Corrupt Practice Act creates a violation for failure to self-report corruption. So again, uh, self-explanatory that uh, there are different platforms which can be utilized to promote what we call is self-reporting and it becomes an essential part of the community and society. In United Kingdom, we see that self-reporting may obviate a criminal prosecution and limit penalties for the civil fine. So what we see is that in the UK, you can reduce your prison sentence and also reduce uh, any other uh, issues of harassment would take place uh, in the different prisons. In uh, the US, prosecutors are regularly more lenient in their charging and in Australia, cooperation with law enforcement is also a common factor in the imposition of a more lenient sentence. So we basically see that uh, all of this uh, becomes uh, very essential and uh, in different countries, there are different formats and different models. but very similar to each other because the state has to take responsibility. Uh, in citizen reporting, to help expose corruption, members of the public can be instrumental in reporting on corruption through standard crime reporting channels or specialized anti-corruption bodies can establish dedicated reporting channels for corruption offenses. Or you could create accountability clubs or integrity clubs around the country and that would also tend to promote citizen reporting and make people more responsible and understanding what are the complications and implications uh, without any fear of any repercussions because the most important thing is always Uh, to do the right thing uh, and to ensure that there is a follow through of uh, what has been committed or what has been discussed. Uh, we also see that uh, governments are required by Article 13 of UN TSE to inform the public about uh, such anti-corruption bodies which we will know. Very famous social startup you can say is I paid a bribe in India which has more than 187,000 single reports by citizens and over 15 million visitors. So again, just the right sentence sometimes can create a lot of awareness and impact within a society. Now, When we talk about citizen reporting, then we can say that in Vietnam, there was the M score, an app in the country has enabled uh, citizen reporting. In Papua New Guinea, we have phones against corruption. Uh, so again, very uh, innovative. So uh, they take the drug and then give the person a phone. And in Pakistan, we have the Pakistan citizen portal, which is being used a lot, actually being overwhelmed, what I've heard. Uh, but again, unfortunately, there's no investigation being done on the issues. And uh, there's just uh, usually a very short uh, order or very short answer to the queries that uh, basically Uh, are raised through the different platforms. So this Pakistan citizen uh, platform or portal is something very nice, but maybe there is a great need for further advancement and also 
uh, creating an awareness among the greater community so that other people can also wear the facilities which are over there. And then there's a uh, FIA cyber crimes complaint cell in which complaints related to the internet and social media are basically lost. So all of these basically tend to facilitate the citizen recording concept within uh, what we call the hierarchical process and ensures uh, that there is uh, better governance uh, through all of this. Reports of corruption in the media can be used to gather more information about and evaluate incidents and then we also have the Mosaic Fonseca papers of 2016 which basically was beyond the Panama documents and they were leaked and again that created a lot of confusion but it is the media's responsibility to ensure that there is no discrimination, there is no bias, it is above, uh, above the board, there can be an opinion but the facts should remain the same. So that is very important in media reporting and therefore what we see is that uh, media reporting and then individual reporting and also then institutional reporting. All of them together create such an environment which would basically enable truth and honesty and those very strong values of uh, making sure that the right thing is done because it is right. That also then tends to prevail within society. Thank you so much.